I should have enough lives here, so let's just go ahead and jump into the level without running home to mama and saving. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, so your fuel is illustrated by the dots on here, and you want to collect fuel throughout the level. And if you run out of fuel, then guess what? Your little platform dies and falls off of its tracks somehow, because that doesn't really make logical sense, but it does. And then with a bottomless pit underneath you, you typically then have to, you know, restart from either the beginning or some save barrel. But who? What was the that? Strongest the strongest suit is the uh, uh, the K or the ice gorilla glacier because you do have several ice themed levels like that makes sense. Whoa. Uh, what was I supposed to do there? Because what, name all of the levels you've more or less seen thus far. We have some like, uh oh, jungle levels, we've had cave levels, minecart, and like these on track levels, we've had some ice levels, so we've had some temple levels, but more or less that's, that's kind of it. And we don't necessarily have to be, oh man, that just barely stayed on. And my N. Unnecessary risks. Oh, yes, and then of course the factory themed levels. Uh oh. No! On one of these, I know it. Yep. Yeah, fun mini game, but not today. Okay, this is not a bonus world, so I can't just die. <laughs> but we do want these. I 
think actually there is a bonus uh, barrel up here though. Nope, just a frog token. Okay, blind jump, thank you very much. Rareware. <sighs> Donkey Kong, you fat heavy beast. Ah uh, yeah, Misty Mine. Not too bad of a level. So, notice there is just the ambient music here too, no, uh, or ambient noise, no music. This is the level though where you can gain a 1-up by consecutive enemy hopping. Oh boy. What do I blow that up on? I can't remember. Oops. How do I get up there now? No. Does the rope respawn? Here it is. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight on the respawn. You might have noticed there's not even really a jingle, it's just it racks up a life up there. It's the jumping snappers that. Oh, there's a secret down in those. Had I carried the, uh, the TNT barrel all the way. Those armadillos are a pain for Diddy. Donkey Kong can at least defeat them, but it kind of stunlocks Diddy a little bit. Nice. And with funky flights, I could then, in theory, if I needed to, fly back to a previous level and save. Ah uh, yes, yeah, so those little critters actually jump at the same time that Diddy does, so you have to really be careful of how you do it. You might have noticed there was some bananas down there. Oh, how could I miss the K like that? You only live once! I refer to these as jumping snappers, although I can't remember their official name. What's cool is in in a lot of classic Nintendo games, the credits usually showed off all of the names of the enemies, which is one thing that I that I always loved, honestly, and kind of miss um, because a lot of times you play through a game and what the uh, enemies are actually called is such a oh boy. It's such a secondary thing. It's almost like, you know, George Lucas Star Wars movies, where, like, all of the characters have a name, it's just that typically they might not even be enunciated or announced or spoken in the movies. Like, case in point. Let's see. No jumping snappers. Respawned. In the very, very, very first Star Wars game, the little, or movie, the little critter at the cantina bar has a name, but it's never, it never says, right, in the movie or anywhere. It's just, in George Lucas's mind, in his universe, he has named it.
silent manky. But doesn't this kind of bring back a little bit of uh, original Donkey Kong vibe where you have to dodge barrels? I mean, I think that's cool. Whoa! That last one always gets me. It's like, there's a banana there. You're supposed to jump. Didn't you see the banana? But that last one is so trolly. <laughs> so trolly. Would you like to take a quick spin in my barrel? I hope. She is just speaking literally and not metaphorically for something. Alright, now, this is a different color palleted one, but notice, it's so strong, not even Donkey Kong can defeat it. So you might have noticed there is a, uh, a barrel there. So there is a left-facing hidden off-screen little moving platform, because that's how you get that one. Finally at the K, for goodness sake. I did not time that well at all. Come here, little armadillo. Ha! Psych! And then it psyched me out too. I thought it was going to spin off the right, but it quickly went to the left, and then I went to the right, and then it's like, hey, I'm going to go to the left, and the next thing I know, it's falling right in my face. Jump. And I guess it's just easier to uh, completely run past it all. that save barrel. Alright, now I believe this is the level where even as Donkey Kong, you start having to, the, the big, I forget what they're called, the muscle building creme croc things that not even Donkey Kong can squish, but like stunlock Donkey Kong if you jump on. Like this, that is hard as Diddy to get past that part. Those dudes, you kind of need a barrel to defeat them. So like this, right here. Don't miss. Oh, snap! Okay, we turn to... Wait, what's, what's that be over there for? No! Which we'll have to break our controller in frustration and quit and never play any other video game in our entire life. Which way do I go? Alright. Man. Man. Got it. I think that's it. Alright, so before I do Neki's Revenge here, I'm going to save because you'll see sort of shortly. 149, 65%. That's not too bad. So this is actually Neki's scene here.
So that is actually all of the courses. So you might have noticed this pirate ship. This is the final boss, actually, Gangplank Galleon, which I can't help but wonder if it did inspire the sequel, Donkey Kong Country 2, in which really the entire game is pirate themed. Like, there is pirate themed enemies, cram crocs, levels, courses from beginning to end, and it's, it's beautiful. It's, it's one of the greatest Donkey Kong Country, or greatest Donkey Kong games ever made. Even the music, this is kind of very similar to the uh, original music for the first level course on Donkey Kong Country 2. Oh, did he? I was gonna one shot this too. Every time he throws that, the uh, the crown speed gets faster. There it is! I have beat the game. So let me begin to read you the credits. Cat starts with a K, of course. Coding, Claptrap. Characters, Crusha. Coloring, Critter. Concept, Clump. Commander, King, King K Rule. The end? Question mark? Well, I mean, we're rolling the credits, aren't we? Stop your celebrating, Donkey Kong. This game is not over. Oh, I forgot how far I had to get away from him. So, yes, like every Donkey Kong Country final boss, you actually have to do the whole thing in all of its stages. So this is all you have to endure. Okay, so we'll let him jump over us. There we go. So, you might, okay, well done, donkey, my boy. Who'd have thought a young whippersnapper like you could have beaten that bunch of no-good Kremlins? You've made an old man proud. Go and look in your hoard. I think you'll be in for a surprise. If it, if I had been playing, I'd have found everything. I'm sure there must be some bonus rooms you haven't found. So interestingly enough, even after you beat the game, if you go in that introductory cave, that's what you see, the little celebration jingle. Naughty, the beaver, Necky, the condor beast, Army, the armadillo, Zinger, Bee, Slippa, Mankey Kong, Mini Necky, The Aquatic Bad Guys, Bite Size, Croctopus, Chomps Jr., Chomps, Clambo, Squidge, Squidge, 
Good old British humor. Clamp trap, that's what they're called. Russia, those are the muscle muscle men, muscle heads. It is Expresso. I said it wrong the whole game, didn't I? On guard. Winky. And Squawks. The Kongs. Is it my turn yet? Funky. Candy. Surely it's me next. Cranky Kong. I did this using one life, and I took less than an hour. So even if you do the game in less than an hour, even if you find all of the secrets, the credits are the exact same thing. Cranky doesn't acknowledge that you've done anything beyond what he could have done, because back in his day, video games were actually hard. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed the first chapter of Donkey Kong Country. I'm super excited to begin and show off Donkey Kong Country 2. There's your music uh, geniuses, David Weiss, Evelyn Fisher, and Robin Beanland. So it, I don't know why Rareware only put the first initial of their first, first letter of their uh, first names, but... That was just kind of their credit style, honestly. Which, come to think of it, now that we're kind of getting into a little bit more sophisticated games, uh, I think music is one of the most important features and facets of video games, period. And how in the world did Rareware have so many, like, top-notch music composers? Like, for example, David Wise, Robin Beanland, Grant Kirkhope, um, Graham Norgate or even Evelyn Fisher worked on and helped make several of the actual Donkey Kong tracks as well in addition to I'm sure she worked on uh, uh, other tracks throughout the uh, throughout Rareware games but at least in my opinion of her she's most famous for the Donkey Kong musics. So there's my final tally 66% of all of the level completions and or bonus barrels found in just sub two hours as far as the video game clock is concerned. Oops, oops, oops. I need the first level here. So, here's the banana horde, even after you beat the game. Yes! 